the Sciat of St. Anne is situated on a steep, densely vegetated slope on the southwest shore of Mount Athos, between the Nea Sciat and Carulia, and is administratively subordinate to the Monastery of Great Lavra. It is the largest and earliest Sciat on the Holy Mountain. It is a special monastic Sciat with 51 huts, Kaliva, 35 of which have a monastic life and over 80 monks. The huts are situated one by one in rows of stairs on terraces, most of them hidden behind beautiful rocks in the valley of olive, lemon and bitter orange trees. The highest caliber is 450 meters above sea level. The main temple of the Sket towers over a steep rocky ledge and is dedicated to the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And below it, on the seashore, a pier joins the monastery, where most pilgrims arrive to pray with the monks and worship the relics kept in the monastery. We, together with the pilgrims who came on the ferry, are climbing the steep concrete steps to the Sket of St. Anne. On the way, we are overtaken by the mules laden with heavy loads, which is the only means of transport here. After a 40-minute ascent along picturesque terraces immersed in green olive orchards, we discover the homey courtyard of the monastery, set up by the monks on the edge of a rocky cliff, in front of the cathedral church of the Sket. From here, there is a splendid view of the southwest coast of Mount Athos. These steep rocky shores, overgrown with dense evergreen vegetation and crowned with cells and huts, help the monks who have ascended the Sket to perform their prayerful deeds in solitude. With the blessing of the abbot of the monastery, we are greeted by Hiram Monk John. Greetings to you here at the Sket. I think it would be good first to explain what monasticism in Sket is and how it differs from the rest of monasticism on Athos. When we say Sket on the Holy Mountain, the term means a settlement, a small village of small monasteries. These dependent parts belonging to our Sket we call Kaliva, huts, whether large or small. Each Kaliva has brethren and its own small temple and functions as one small monastery. The whole brethren of this Kaliva makes up a skirt and has a central temple, like a cathedral, where the fathers gather on Sunday. It is called Kyriakon. Each year, one Kaliva takes over the management of the common affairs and is responsible for the temple, Kyriakon, and the elder of that hut becomes Dikias, Skirt Abbot. So every year we change and Dikias is in charge of the main temple of the Sket. So we have a temporary abbot who organizes the general management of the Sket, and together we hold services and celebrate holidays. Such as today, we all celebrated Easter together. How did this system come about? The word Sket as a term originated from the Sket in Egypt where in the 4th century there was a settlement of ascetics called a sket. This is the type that created the sket here. The first mention of the coastal area of Ulefteria, where the sket of St. Anne is situated at present, dates back to the 196-180 BC and is described in the Helen inscription found by Bishop Porphyry Spensky in the Sket of St. Anne during his pilgrimage to Holy Mount Athos in 1858-1861. I suppose that the locality beneath the name Sket belonged to this city and that the city council, Wolfterion, 
was situated there, and that the seaside place in question also belonged to it, and was therefore called so also Voluftirion. Both these localities, in the plural, were called Voluftiria. In the 7th century, when all of Mount Athos was emptied by the Saracen massacre, the Byzantine Emperor Constantine IV handed over Athos to the monks, and some hermits settled in the area near the sea in Voluftiria and built a small monastery in the name of the Most Holy Mother of God. This small monastery was destroyed in the year 830, the year of the second pogrom of the Arabs, and was restored a little before the year 1012 by the second hegemon of the great Lavra of Saint Athanasius, named Eustratius, and for the trouble-free maintenance of the new monastery, he added to it the monastery of Christ the Savior on the Isle Skyros and he added the possessions acquired there with the money of the Lavra in the year 1012, when he was no longer the hegemon of the Lavra of Saint Athanasius, but he was one of his brethren. This donation was made by him with the assent of the Lavra elders, which respected Eustratius for his former merits. Since then, the monks of the great Lavra have supported the cloister of Voluftiria, despite the fact that it has been repeatedly ruined and devastated by sea robbers. In the 14th century, the monastery was recreated by the Venerable Gerontius, the last hegumen of the monastery of Voluftiria. But the continuing pirate raids forced the monks to leave their abode, and some of them moved to the caves and the woods near Mount Athos itself, while others built a small cloister in the name of Saint Anthony the Great above the Kafsukalivia Sket. During these years, in the wilderness area of Voluftiria, Venerable Nifant of Athos spent many years in Sket, in silence and stillness, eating on the grass and roots. Sometime around 1360, when pirates were raiding and the monks could not live on the shore, they decided to move higher up, and so they settled at the level where we are today, about 350 meters, but even higher, about 700 meters above. Up to the present day, there is a hermitage of Saint Pantelimon, where the Venerable Gerontius ascended. The elders lived there with their disciples, but not for long. They had problems connected with the lack of a water source. And then a miracle happened. Water began to flow from the ground. This holy spring of Saint Gerontius still exists today. And so, in order to live in better conditions, around the end of the 14th and beginning of the 15th centuries, they came down here, where we are today, and founded a small settlement with an elder in the center and huts arranged around it. Thus, the disciples of Saint Gerontius created the first community, beginnings of this sketch. They had a temple where they gathered on feasts. Since then, it has been called Kyriakon. From the end of the 16th century, hermits began to settle not far from the sketch of Saint Anna, in the place nowadays called Little Anna. The first hermits who built a cell here were the Venerable Dionysius Ritor and his disciple, the Venerable Metrophanes. Valery, is this little cave from way back then? Yes, it was such a place of retreat for monks. Venerable Dionysius Ritor was from a noble imperial family and lived here in the 17th century with Saint Metrophanes. There is a cave church down there where they prayed. They left the sket of Saint Anne and settled here. 
It is a very convenient place for a monk to do Jesus' prayer. Here, near the Mother of God, you can find solitude and pray. You can see here are the crania of the monks, as in the ossuary, and the icon of Archangel Michael. This is the cell of the Archangel, and there is nothing to be afraid of if a stone falls down. Here, for hundred years, nothing will fall, because everything is in God's hands, under protection of Holy Lady. It is very pleasant to be here. And uh, then Dionysius Ritter would have come out here and walked to this well. They would have come here, put jars, prayed, taken water and uh, gone to their cells. Let's go down. This is an important place for the skirt of little Anna. Rainwater was collected here. At the time, the biggest problem of these places was the lack of water. Therefore, the Venerable Dionysius Ritor and the Venerable Metrophanes built a water intake system here. Rainwater seeped through the rock, here it was filled up and became crystal clear. Now, of course, there are other springs, there is a water pipeline above, but back then this water was the very salvation for the monks. We are in this beautiful holy place in the Sket of Little Anna, which belongs to the Sket of Saint Anna and is a territory of the Great Lavra. This is how the fathers practiced asceticism in the caves, a very interesting place. During these years in the Volefteria monastery, the venerable martyr Makarios of Kios who afterwards set out to the city of Prusa in Asia Minor to preach the Orthodox faith, lived 12 years in asceticism and penance, and was tortured, stoned and decapitated by the Turks. In the 17th century, the Brotherhood of the Sket continued to grow. Thus, in 1623, a layman named George, a monk named Germanus, built himself a cell near the present Kyriakon of the Sket. In those years, two priests from Asia Minor came to the Holy Mountain and brought the foot of Saint Anne to the cloister of Provata, where then the elder Matthew of Mytilene resided. Patriarch Dionysius III Vadalis allocated funds for the reconstruction of the main temple of the Sket. Since then, the Sket has taken the name of Saint Anne, while the old Volefteria has gradually fallen out of use. In the pilgrimage book of Holy Mount Athos, published in 1701 by the Georgian monk Saint Antimus Iberian in the printery of the Snagov Monastery in Wallachia, the Greek nobleman John Komnenos Molyrdos describes the sket of Saint Anne during his stay on the Holy Mountain in this way. Some of them are scribes, some are bookbinders, some are singers, some carve panagias and crosses, some sew scufos, some make spoons, some glue up prayer books, and thus they feed themselves, being most busy with prayer and spending their lives in fasting, toil and hardship. Every Sunday they gather together and celebrate the liturgy in the Kyriakon and talk to one another, asking about various soul-saving subjects and answering with humility and brotherly love. And then they all go off to their cells. The life of the Sket's inhabitants was complicated after the Great Lavra Monastery in 1674 issued a written order forbidding the Dikias and brethren of the Sket's to engage in farming and beekeeping, since strict monks were tempted by such practices, and it was prescribed to expel from the Sket anyone who would violate this order. Great Lavra also made it a rule that the Sket's monks obey the Edikias, which is approved by Lavra Statute. In 1682, 
the Patriarch of Constantinople, Dionysius III Vadalis, prescribed by his charter that children and bellies young men should not be admitted to Saint Anne's Sciat, and that the fathers who are saved here should neither keep bees nor have other worldly occupations, as all these were forbidden at the very beginning of the establishment of the Sciat. In 1689, Patriarch Dionysius III approved the first charter of the Sciat, and subsequently, after resignation of the patriarchal throne, went to Mount Athos to struggle for the salvation of the soul, where he benefited the monastery of Great Lavra and the Sciat of Saint Anne. In the 18th century, thanks to the efforts of monks and pious pilgrims, the Sciat continued to be rebuilt. Thus, in 1729, the former bishop of Nafpaktos and Atta, Neophytes, built a cemetery church in the name of Theotokos the Life-Giving Spring, near the Skets Kyriakon. And a certain monk Samuel from Kithra Island restored the church of Saint Eleutherios, which stood on the site of the ancient Vulifteria cloister. In 1744, Vasily Grigorovich Barsky visited the Sket. He wrote, and uh, there were about 60 cells, closely spaced among themselves. Some of them are with small churches, some are without them, and all of them are on steep and overhanging stone places, and they are like swallows' nests, with great cliffing, and are turned up by the sea. All of them have water flowing out of Athos, and are divided by wooden channels according to needs of the people. In some of the churches there is one or two, but in others there are three men. And by the sea near the shore there is a cell of Saint Eleutherius, which was a small ancient monastery of Ulifteria. And there is also a mill where they do the flour. And sometimes sheep reach to buy it. And there is a common church in the name of the Saint Anne, with a cupola a pavis and a forecourt. Since then the Sket has even greater prosperity and reached the peak of inhabitants and divine services by the middle of the 18th century, after 1750. This gave rise to the construction, renovation and enlargement of the Kyriakon church in 1752, which has preserved its appearance ever since to the present day. The temple was rebuilt by the elder Philippios, the Peloponnesian, from Nafplion, and in 1757 it was repainted by the famous icon painters Philotheos and Athanasius. In 1774, a bell tower was erected near the monastery. Let us tell you about some facts connected with our life here in the Sket. One of them is a painting on the walls of the main temple, which was made in 1752-1756 and has a direct connection with the five martyrs – Eustratius, Eugen, Oxentius, Madarius and Orestes, whose memory is celebrated on the 13th of December. When the iconographers arrived to do these murals, the fathers did not have enough money to pay, and they left without fulfilling their contract. Then these saints appeared to them a little higher up, where the spring of Saint Gerontius is now, and told them to go down to the Sket and that they would pay them themselves for the work. So the iconographers went down here and did the frescoes, and the fathers, in gratitude, depicted scenes with them on the left side of the Kyriakon of the Sket. Thus we have the images of these five martyrs. In 1779, the fathers of the Sket established to serve 40 divine liturgies in the new church for the health and repose of their brothers. Beginning with Thomas Sunday and in the Sunday of All Saints to sing a great memorial service, Panikis, while every Friday evening throughout the year to serve the customary liturgy for the dead with Kaliva in the cemetery church. On 
the 2nd of September 1820, a torrential rain of unprecedented strength with incessant thunder and lightning broke out over the entire Holy Mount. It flooded the Sket huts so much that the water did not have time to flow out through the doors and windows. The four huts moved from their bases, and the three elders, who had not had time to come out of them, died. Their bodies were lost. Only parts of their feet were found on the seashore. At the turn of the 18th-19th centuries, the number of monks ascetized in the Sket continued to increase and by 1845 it reached 120 monks. In these years in the monastery have ascended in prayer, glorified the Sket Saint Venerable Martyrs, Luke of Mytilene, Hilarion, Nikitas, Nectarius, David, Paul Panagiotis of Peloponnesus. During the Greek War of Independence of 1821-1830, the Sket, unlike most other monasteries of the Holy Mountain, did not suffer from the repression of the Turkish army, since it was located in an inaccessible area. Most of the monks did not leave it, and the huts were not destroyed. In 1843, the Ecumenical Patriarch Hemen IV approved the rules for the monks of the Sket of Saint Anne. They consisted of 20 chapters and defined the strict way of life of the monks of the Sket. Thus, they were forbidden to keep pack animals in the Sket, as well as beehives, boats and fishing nets, and to plant nuts. For this is contrary to the vow of the monks, who pledged themselves to be unmercenaries. Huts of the Sket was bought or sold only in the presence of the Dikias and the elders, who had to test the buyer's disposition and way of life, with a bill of sale issued by the monastery of Great Lavra, and on the death of the monks, the Lavra inherited every hut and all his possessions. However, the Sket continued to grow, and by the early 20th century, up to 300 monks and novices were living there. In these years, in the Sket, there lived a lot of famous elders of the Holy Mount, for example, Saint Savo of Kalimnos in the Domitian hut, and Saint Joseph of Hesychast stayed in the hermitage of Mikroagia Anna with his brotherhood. In the Sket of Saint Anne, the elder Anthimus Aegeanonitis, who was considered the main father confessor of the Holy Mountain, prayed unceasingly. Even today, the Sket of Saint Anne is known for its strictness and remains the most ascetic place on the Holy Mount. For example, the monks of the Sket do not sleep at night before communion, do not go out into the world during Lent, and the other monks of the Sket do not serve outside the Holy Mount. As in the olden days, the Sket lives thanks to the work of its inhabitants and donations from benefactors. On the numerous terraces around the monastery's huts, the monks plant vegetable gardens, keep bees and grow olive and fruit trees. In the monastery's workshops, the monks are engaged in book binding and rosary making, which uses special cereals with hard dark grains, known on the holy mountain as the Tears of Panagia. An important source of income for the Sket is the production of candles. They are made of wax, and the process of making them has not changed much since ancient times. Вот 
πέρα έχουμε ζήσει να τρέχει λίγο λίγο για να κρατάει. Και ποιες με ρωτάμε τώρα. Να δείτε, παγκοζένει τα κορέτα. И вот так вот упаковываются вот свечки свеженькие, чистого воска, ручной, так сказать, рукодельной работы. Вот, пожалуйста, вот батюшка с такой красивой упаковочкой, соответственно, пишет, где это производится, на святой гориафон, вид келии. Благодать и ароматно. Никакой химии. There is an iconography studio in the skiat where the monks of the monastery humbly and prayerfully write images of saints, transmitting the grace of God for eternal consolation to people from the reverend iconographer. The other icons are distinguished by their special manner of painting. There is a touching tenderness of faces, the vividness of images, virtuosity of performance and very subtle, almost jewel-like elaboration of even the smallest details. The icons, as if wrapped in a haze of light, seem to glow from within and radiate peace, harmony, unearthly silence. First we prepare the wood and putty it. The boards have to go through this kind of treatment. Then we draw a sketch, like here, and after the sketch is ready, we apply the gold. First on the bottom right here, where the gilding polymer is applied, and up here on the top. And when this is how the preparation of the gilding of the icon is done, the icon painting begins. Here you see some of the icons we have created. Here is Jesus Christ, and the Blessed Virgin Mary. These icons are almost finished. Their tradition of icon painting is usually Byzantine. First we apply dark paints and then lighter ones. Then more and lighter, because in the same way at first the human being is dark from passions and is gradually enlightened by the grace of the Holy Spirit. In the same way icons are created. They are made lighter layer by layer until this white has become absolutely white. The same happens with other colors and with the faces of the saints. Today the monks are baking prosphora, and Father John kindly invited us into his cell to film the process of making them. Больше ничего не разрешается, потому что просвора должна быть чистая. Немножко вот добавляться, соответственно, только соль. По традиции вообще вот это приготовление теста, да, мы делаем в три стадии. Дали то зимон мы мия фора, то афирму те катите. Один раз мы смешиваем и оставляем, чтобы оно присело. То зимон мы две три фора, то афирму те катите. И второй раз то же самое делаем, тоже оставляем тоже. Те петаристика то зимон мы три фора. 
И потом уже третий раз уже смешиваем. Эти, то живом, то жимарио, а пока там я пластиковый, это сам пластилиник, един, это тот омрак. И вот это смещение, оно вот тесто как образуется, получается как пластилин, он, он как пластифицируется, то есть он становится такой резиновый, можно сказать. Ке што телуш, то плазм, то кармам микра, микра што дела прошпорате, што пе ваш бутон кеч. И потом уже делаем такие шарики и сверху уже наносится печать. Идет дальше. И потом прошпатуме, то зимарик, то так кармам, не шфихто. Стараемся, чтобы тесто, вот это, которое мы приготовим, оно чтобы вот такое э, сжатое. То есть. Я тебе че борить, а потом хоро не шфрагина. Потому что когда оно вот такое плотное, тогда можно хорошо печать ставить. А в тот торе, это тоже можем акомалиго. Это еще немножко мы вот так будем. Это накроем. Декапедалептадия на фушкошилиго. На 15 минут, чтобы опять оно тесто поднялось дальше. Проту телиошме, закопшеме на микрокомати. То пью это то кратишуме, я на это то поражение, я тебе не помню фарма. Но кусочек мы отсюда вырезаем на следующий раз для того, чтобы вот от этого теста было брожение на следующий раз. Мы всегда вот вставляем на это. А в тот раз и на это будем это фишуме, тем более фора, где эти масти. То есть вот это уже у нас первая стадия. Она вот, допустим, вот готова. Вот видите, она такое. Тверде, для просфора вот она используется. Вот она патишуме тис фрагидес, а та фишуме мета с една та пси та просфора, я мия ме мия миси ора на логос мити термокрасия, я на фушкошум. Молис парну лигу на фушкошуме, то та та валуме сто фурну я перику три этажа. После того как мы стая наносится печать на тесто, соответственно полтора часа она остается для того чтобы опять это тесто оно немножко еще поднялось и уже после этого оно уже заносится в печь. Λοιπόν, αυτά, αφού τα ζυμώσαμε και τα πλάσαμε και πατήσαμε τις φραγίδες, θα αφήσαμε άλλη μία ώρα περίπου, φούσκωσαν, τώρα γίναν διπλάσια από τίτλια και τώρα πρέπει μέσα να τα βάλουμε στο πλάσμα. Αυτό είναι αυτό το πλάσμα, 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 αυτό είναι αυτό το Буквально уже вот как час прошло после того, как были поставлены сверху печати. И вот, чтобы были уже испеченные просворы, нужно подождать 45 минут. И все будет прекрасно. Они сейчас у нас в духовке. An hour's walk from the skate of Saint Anne, beyond the reach of the cliff that descends steeply to the sea, is the skate of Mikroagia Anna, Little Saint Anne. This place is considered one of the most beautiful on the Holy Mount, and we go to the observation point on the top of the cliff where there is a magnificent view of the coast of Mount Athos. The Sket of Mikroagia Anna is famous for the production of incense, which is considered to be one of the best on the Holy Mount. As in olden times, the whole complex process of making incense is done by hand by the monks with prayer and reverence. We are now in one of the huts in the little Anna Sket, visiting Father Euthymius, and we will ask him to tell us about the process of making incense.
Το θυμίαμα γίνεται από την πρώτη ύλη, αποτελεί, γίνεται από τρία συστατικά. Incense is made from three main ingredients. The first is the resin of the Bozuelia tree, which grows in Ethiopia, Sudan, Yemen and Somalia. About three or four times a year, small incisions are made in the trunk of this tree, from which resin gushes out. This resin is collected and cleaned, then packed into bags and shipped to our countries. We grind this resin to the size of semolina, but not as flour, not too finely. Then we knead this mixture with appropriate aromatic substances and roll it up. Make macaroni of sorts. Then we cut it into small particles with scissors. This is the final form of incense. I have of course told you very briefly how to make it. At the end, we wrap the incense in boxes. The greatest shrine of our sket, around which our whole life turns, are the relics of Saint Anne, the mother of our Blessed Virgin. Nowadays, the reliquary with the relics of Saint Righteous Anna is carefully preserved by the sket monks in the altar of the main church of the sket. The relics are the left foot of Saint Anne, the mother of our Blessed Virgin. It is the left foot with fingers and skin, which is more than 2,000 years old. Since 1686, these relics have been in the temple of our Sket. When the temple was built in 1686, it was dedicated to the Saint Anne, and the Holy Fathers kept her relics in the cell on the north side, when they were brought from Jerusalem. And after the construction of the temple, they were transferred here. These relics kept here have performed many miracles for sick and childless families who turn to them for help in faith and reverence. Here in the main church of the Sket, there is another shrine of the Sket, the miraculous icon of Saint Anne, mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Here is the miraculous icon of Saint Anne, the mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who performs miracles for childless couples, which you can see in the photos with young children. These photos are constantly brought in by parents and left here at the icon to show the miracle performed and to thank Saint Anne for the gift and blessing given to them. The icon dates from around the 16th century, is behind glass, as you can see. Over the years, she has performed many miracles for people who asked her help with faith and reverence. It is a great blessing to have the icon here, in the sket of Saint Anne, the mother of the Blessed Virgin, where her miracles and blessings are performed, giving grace to families with our children, who turn to her for help and blessing. Today is the baptism of our Lord, and together with the monks and guests of the monastery, we are going to the main temple of the Sket to take part in the festive divine liturgy.
The Feast of Baptism is also called the Feast of Epiphany, because on that day God revealed Himself to the world in three persons of His Godhead. God the Son, Jesus Christ, was baptized in the Jordan. The Holy Spirit descended upon Him as a dove, and God the Father witnessed Jesus Christ with a voice from heaven. The monks sing Psalm chapter 112. Praise the name of the Lord, the servants of the Lord, who stand in the temple of the Lord, in the courtyard of the house of our God. It is sung, servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Thus only His servants, those who believe in Him and do His will, are invited to honor and praise the Lord. For anyone else, with his impure mouth only offends the Most High and is not worthy and cannot praise Him worthily. The priest comes out to the royal gates and reads the Holy Gospel of the Apostle and Evangelist Mark. On the Feast of the Epiphany there is the rite of consecration of water, which is called great because of the special solemnity of the rite, imbued with the memory of the baptism of the Lord, in which the Church sees not only the first image of the mysterious washing of sins, but also the actual sanctification of the very nature of the water, through the immersion of God in the flesh into it.
the great sanctification begins with the singing of the Proverbs. The voice of the Lord on the waters cries, saying, Come, receive all the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of the fear of God, Christ who appeared. Today the waters are sanctified by nature and others. Then three verses from the book of Isaiah are read. The consecration of water is called the Megasagiasmos, which in Greek means great sanctification. Only on these two days of the year a special rite of water sanctification is recited. There is a moment in it when the priest asks God to come and sanctify the water, just as he did in the Jordan. While repeatedly singing the Epiphany Tropery, the priest dips the Holy Cross three times into the water, holding it upright with both hands. In the Jordan, O Lord, to you who are baptized, the triple worship is revealed. The voice of the parent voice testifies to you, who are your beloved son, and the spirit in the form of a dove makes known the words of affirmation. I be a Christ God and enlighten the world. Glory be to thee. continue singing the dropper hymn, while the priest, with the cross in his left hand, sprinkles the church and all present with holy water. Pros 
σε μαρτύρηση, αγάπη των σε ιών, ονομάζουσα. It's time for the festive liturgy. Great is the liturgy. It is the time to remember all the life of God who became incarnate, who suffered and died for us, who rose from the dead and ascended, and who will judge the world. The benefit of the liturgy is immeasurable for the whole Orthodox Church, because the bloodless sacrifice and prayers are offered to the Lord for the whole universe. Because of the celebration of the liturgy, the Lord suffers long for the whole world and pardons the whole world. The little entrance is performed with the priests and the deacon carrying the Eucharist gifts exiting the altar to the Sulia with the north gates. The little entrance serves as a picture of the presentation of the Lord Jesus Christ at the sermon during his earthly life. At the same time, this entrance is a symbolic expression of the close communion of those praying in the temple with their Lord. During the singing of Kamlaris worship, the clergy enter through the king's gate into the altar, where the deacon places the Eucharist gifts on the sanctuary table. The word of the Apostles is proclaimed as the reader comes with the book of the Apostle into the midst of the temple, in the midst of the people as if to the peoples of the world, to disseminate the word of Christ into the hearts of the people. At this moment, we need to gather all spiritual strength to God's word will not fall on stone, lest the weeds litter it and choke it up. Κληρονόμοι γενόμεθα, κατ' ελπίδα ζωής αιωνίου. Σοφία, ορθία του σωμένου Αγίου Ευαγγελίου.
the deacon comes out into the center of the temple to proclaim the good news of the Gospel of Christ. The Gospel in the temple is not inferior in its gracious power to the living preaching of Christ 2,000 years ago in Galilee. It is the same Word that created the world. It was the Word that raised the dead, gave sight to the blind, enabled the deaf to hear, enabled the lame to walk, and cleansed the lepers. Nothing has changed since then, because Christ is the same forever, and His Word cannot devalue or lose its power over time. The Cherubic hymn is sung. It is a kind of musical center of the liturgy. It is the most beautiful hymn, consisting of two parts, which are separated by the great entrance.
The great entrance is one of the most solemn parts of the liturgy. From the north gate of the altar, the ministers bring the holy gifts, bread and wine, to the center of the church, with Christians standing with their heads bowed, expressing respect for the holy gifts and asking that they also be remembered by the Lord in His pleasure. The clergy stop at the royal gates and pray for all, commemorating the primate of the church, the bishops, the monks of the Sket, the ctitors and benefactors, and all Orthodox Christians. The Eucharist is the main sacrament of the Church, in which the true body and the true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ are taught to the believer in the guise of bread and wine. The thanksgiving of God is the main content of the prayers of this divine service. In this sacrament what the Christian is called to do is to unite with the Lord, to have fellowship with God. Today is the last day of our stay in the Sket of Saint Anne, and we are going to Saint John Chrysostom's Calvary to thank Father Gabriel who gave us shelter and helped us with the filming of this film. Με την αφορμή της επίσκεψης εδώ του τηλεοπτικού συνεργείου και του κυρίου Βαλέριου. On the occasion of the visit here of Mr. Valerius Film Crew, who are hosted by the Sket of Saint Anne, and in particular in the Saint John Chrysostom Calvary, I would like to convey our wishes for a good year to the people of Moldova. And I would also like to emphasize that, like many centuries ago, the people of Moldova are connected to the Holy Mountain. There used to be many lords who made great donations to the Holy Mountain. Mount Athos has a special bond with Moldova. Therefore, once again, I would like to wish the Moldovan people a good year and love between the nations. May God bless you and send all the best to the people of Moldova and the Holy Mount. All the best to you. Thank you. It is time to say goodbye. It is with sadness that we leave the Sket of Saint Anne and express our deep gratitude to the Brotherhood of the Sket for the warm welcome and the opportunity to make this film. When we leave, we take with us a piece of warmth that the monks of the monastery gave us. And we will try to give this warmth to our relatives and all Orthodox Christians living in Moldova and beyond. We hope that the film made will help us in this. Thank God. <laughs>